So what we need to do for this problem is we need to uh, find the differences because when we do a pair t-test, and just kind of real quickly, a matched pairs t-test can be done with, a lot of times it's a before and after situation. In this case, it's before and after. We have data before, so in this case, when they didn't take a nap, and then after, when they took a nap. A lot of times, match pairs t-tests or intervals come from before and after situations. Another one would be like, you know, if we did like a diet plan, we want to know how much weight they've lost, right? We're comparing the difference in what they weighed before with what they weighed after. However, it doesn't always have to be matched in the same person. It could be um, matched in some sort of other characteristic. Like if we were asking, we we're asking people as they come out of a movie to rate the movie on a scale of one to 10, but we're only asking couples. So when we're asking couples, they're uh, dependent, some of us more than others, um, but we're, we're, we have some sort of characteristic that's keeping us in common, so that's called a matched pairs test. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a before and after situation, although that's the most common that we see. So we can't take, with independent, we were looking at something like this, mu one minus mu two. But we can't do that in this case because we're doing a pair test. So this is not what we're interested in a pair t-test. What we're interested in is the mean difference. The mean difference. As opposed to the difference of means. Remember I told you that was going to be, I was going to come back. Okay, the different, this is the difference of means. This is the mean difference, and we'll talk about that once we get going here. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to take the difference of each of these nap and no nap for each employee. So what I'm going to write here is I'm going to say D equals nap minus no nap. Now, it does not matter which one you decide to go first. You just have to understand the context in which you are dealing with. In this case, I'm dealing with, um, I, I think that if, um, what I'm hoping for is that the nap allows my employees to have more production, which is a higher number of tasks completed. So I'm thinking that the second one should be bigger than the first one. So I'm going to subtract nap minus no nap and hopefully hope for positive values. Um, if I subtracted the other way, then I would just have to remember that um, no nap minus nap maybe that'll be negative values. So that's, it's kind of important which way you decide to, to choose to subtract. I would say that the best, the, the easiest thing to do is to subtract in a way that you're gonna end up with positive values. Okay, it makes the hypothesis a little bit easier. All right, so what I want you to do right now is subtract all of those. You're gonna go nap minus no nap. So I'll do the first one for you. 12 minus nine is, we're just gonna write three there, easy. 9 minus 10 is negative 1. Before I go on, let me, let me quickly talk about what these numbers represent. This 3 represents that employee 1 completed 3 more tasks with the nap than without the nap. Yes? Employee 2, the nap actually made his, his or her productivity worse. Okay? They had one less nap, uh, one less nap one less task completed with the nap than without. And we're going to go through this whole thing like that. What about employee four? Employee four has zero, which means it didn't matter whether they took a nap or not. They were, had the same production, right? So there was no difference in, in production with or without a nap. They have the highest production. They did. Interestingly enough, they had the highest production. Um, but if we're just looking at the difference in production, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to fill out this whole thing here. 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4. Get that employee in nap. Put a, put a sleeping bag in their office. Okay, these numbers represent the difference in task in nap versus no nap. 
Let's find the average. We need to find the average of this. So I'm going to call the average D bar. So go ahead and compute the average right now. Add them up together, divide by the total number of terms. 1.6. 1.64. So what does this 1.64 represent? This 1.64 represents the average difference, but we want to, we want to uh, uh, make that, we want to understand it in context, okay? So the context of this is that, look, on average, on average, this group completed 1.64 more tasks having taken their nap, then no nap. So we saw an increase in production on average from this group by about 1.64 tasks, all right? Or I could say it um, that uh, employees in this group with the nap had on average 1.64 more, more tasks completed than without the nap. That, that sounds more like the confidence interval we were talking about, right? Now, this number is the average of this group. But what we'd like to do is use this group to make an estimate of the entire population, which is a confidence interval. So we're going to go ahead and make the confidence interval for a 95. We're going to do a 95% confidence interval. And um, we can do the math by using a one sample t, t, uh, t interval, just like we did before. And here is the math behind it, okay? So all this stuff here is what goes with um, a, a paired t-test. n minus 1 is the degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is n minus 1. Now for today, for this class, I, I don't need you to do the math. We're going to focus on doing this using um, technology, okay? So in this case, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use GeoGebra to show you how to do that. On your lab today, you do not have to do the math. I'm going to give you the the computer output and all you have to do is look there it is and i'm going to write the confidence interval okay so don't do all the math just do the the computer stuff and one of the reasons i'm also recording this is so that you have this video so that you can go back and take a look at how to use geogebra because i know that that might be a sticking point so i'm going to go to we live right now we are cool. well we're not live right now but i'm recording nice. yeah i could have gone live could have done live stream <laughs> I guarantee you I would have had people on this live stream too. Um, so we're going to go to geogebra.org. Yeah, right? <laughs> Hi, Mom. Um, ge <laughs> geogebra.org, and we're going to click on spreadsheet. And then the spreadsheet's going to come out like this. Well, obviously, it's going to be open, but you know, I've already put in my data. And I'm going to take the first two columns of my data. I'm going to highlight the two columns. I'm going to click on the histogram. And I'm going to do a multiple variable analysis, similar to what I did for the independence. Now, it's nice to have those box plots. And I could use those box plots if I was doing a two sample t-test to show that the, uh, well, to hopefully show that these are going to be symmetric for my condition. Uh, but it doesn't work in a pair t-test to use those. So we'll have to do something different when we get back to the hypothesis test. Right now, we're just going to look at the confidence interval. So I'm going to show statistics, and I'm going to do t-estimate paired differences. Okay, so here's all the important st here are all the important statistics. What I really need for my confidence intervals down here in lower limit and upper limit. So my lower limit for my confidence interval is 0.67. And my upper limit, I believe, was 2.9. Let's go back and take a look. Oh, it's 2.59, so we'll go 2.6. Okay, now the important thing is, how do we interpret the confidence interval? So, here's how we interpret the confidence interval. We are 95% confident. that the average number of tasks
that can be completed by all employees is between 0.67 and 2.6 greater with a nap than without a nap. I remember that in our confidence interval, we're talking about the entire population. So that's why I would say between 0.67 and 2.6 greater with a nap than without the nap. Okay, I want to be comparative. So that's why we use that word greater. So that's the confidence interval. Now we want to take a look at the hypothesis test. So the hypothesis test, um, in my previous hypothesis, we used this uh, mu1 minus mu2. Since we're not looking at mu1 minus mu2, we're actually looking at mu difference. So what I'm going to write down here for mu, I'm going to use mu d with the subscript d. And I'm going to write this as the mean difference in tasks. I'm just going to write nap minus no nap. The, the company would like to know if there is a uh, increase, right? They want to know if taking a nap helps. So we want our, our mean to be greater than zero. We want our differences to be positive. If our differences are positive, it means that the nap helped. It means we have uh, better production, more tasks completed on average than with the nap than without the nap. The nap what wins. the nap wins, and everybody's happy. What would the null hypothesis be? There was no difference between taking a nap and not taking a nap then what would we expect the mean difference to be? Equal to zero. There would be no difference. We'd see all those numbers up there be zero. Okay? So if the mean difference is zero, then there's no difference between taking a nap and no nap. It doesn't matter. You're going you're gonna to produce the same amount of tasks. Uh, this is always going to be true in this case for, uh, mu, for a pair T test. It's all, at least in this class for now, it's always going to be mu d equals zero or mu d is greater than zero. There are cases when it might not be zero, but that's like in real life, if I was a company and, and I was looking at just like just a difference and if this came out to be significant and it was only, be, and they, it was only significant because they made one task better than what they did before, uh, that I might not be confident that I have the money to afford letting people take naps every day. Like I might want that difference to be like greater than four. Um, in that case, I might want to change that in real life. But for now, we're just looking to see if the difference was significant, um, significantly greater. So we're just looking at zero. Okay. The conditions for inference for this. The first one is, everyone knows this one, random sample. Sample was taken at random. Second one is, um, well, we know that they're not independent between two groups, right? Because it's just, it's paired. So we're going to say that these are um, uh, data are paired. And that really isn't a condition, but we're going to say it anyway because we, on the last one, we did talk about independence between groups, and this one clearly is not independent between groups. Now, the third one is we do have to have some sort of independence, meaning that uh, one person's nap doesn't affect another person's nap, okay? Unless, of course, you have my 
the daughter comes in to sleep with us, then it does affect my sleeping pattern. There's nothing like taking a nap and feeling a knee in your back squeaky to wake kid. you up. Yeah. Squiggly kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was one, night, one night, she's just like sleeping. It's a hand right in the face. She doesn't know. Okay. Uh, we could do this in two ways. We can say one person's nap doesn't affect the other person, so they're independent. Or I can say that there are less than 11 people, 11 employees is less than 10% of all the employees. Um, either way, in this case, would work. So we're going to say um, each employee employee's production is independent of another's. I, I like using the 10% rule, but this one works for, two, for this one. The last one is the nearly normal condition, which is basically that the data are, are unimodal and symmetric. So we're going to say the distribution of differences is unimodal and symmetric. as shown in the dot plot. And you're probably saying, what dot plot? Mm, the one we're going to draw right now. <laughs> OK. So we need to draw a dot plot. The dot plot here is of the differences, not the original data, the differences. So I'm going to draw a little dot plot right here of these data, of these right here. Okay, these guys down here. Not not the original ones, the differences. Negative 1 0 1 2 3 4 All right, that's not bad. That's barely unimodal and symmetric. Just have to kind of show it like that. All right, so we're going to do a paired t-test. It's always good to um, say which test you're doing. We're going to do a paired t-test. Um, we're going to do this in, the, in GeoGebra again. If you wanted to do this by hand, you could do this by hand by doing just a one, one sample t-test. Some of you are like, no, I'm not doing my hand. If I don't have to, then I'm not going to. Um, if, uh, if you have a calculator, though, like a TI Inspire, TI-84, these, it'll do this as well. OK, so we're going to go back to GeoGebra, but I already have it here, so that's nice. So I'm going to go t-test for paired differences. And um, the mean difference right here, it's defaulted as, le as not equal to zero. But we want this to be greater than zero. And that's, that's important just because it's going to be either a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. So in this case, we want a one-tailed test. Here's our p-value down here. p equals 0 0.0018. So I'm going to state my p-value. 0.0018. I should probably put down my t-score too. t with uh, 10 degrees of freedom, that's a little subscript, is 3.79. We'll use an alpha level of 0.05, although 
What's really the alpha level if I, did, if I already did a 95% confidence interval? 0 0.025, good. One, uh, you're like, ah. Oh, so with, with a one-tail test, a one-tail test at a 95% confidence level, it's going to be 0 0.025 because I have 5% left over. Divide by 2, it's 0 0.025. If you struggle with that, look on your T-table. Go to 95%, go straight up. That's the alpha level. So our alpha level here is 0 0.025. Can you deal with the tails? Oh, uh, okay. A greater than? Yeah, the one tail, two tail. A greater than or a less than yeah. oh, okay. is one tail. Okay. Because when you shade the model, uh -huh. you're only going to shade above or below. Okay. But a not equal to is two tail. I don't know. What because you shade on the sides and the middles. Right. Because you shade on the outsides. Middle. This one looks like this. Shaded here. Yeah. Shaded here. Okay. So our conclusion since the p value. is much smaller than alpha. If the p is low, reject the null. No. I'll keep it clean. Reject the null. Since the p is Low, we're going to reject the null, which means that there's going to be, in this case, it's so small, 0 0.0018, that's very small. It's a very small p-value. There is strong evidence that the mean number of tasks employees can complete with a nap is greater than without a nap. And from the sounds of the yawns, you all should take a nap before you start the lab. But don't, because then we'll be here forever. Okay. Okay, that's it.